You know what's funny is when you start YouTube, it's really hard to gather an audience. And I've learned over the years that the best way to get people to show up to your channel is to talk about stuff that's controversial. Which works really well for someone like me because I enjoy talking about controversial video game topics. And sometimes beyond that. And the Atari VCS is no different. And we have a situation. And in this video today, I wanted to talk about Michael Arts leaving the Atari VCS. In fact, he's publicly come out and said that he is no longer going to be a part of Atari after their successful launch. And it got me thinking, is the Atari VCS a scam console after all? So if you're new to the channel, some of you may not know that I had covered the Atari VCS in, in great depth. Uh, the Atari company, on the whole, is not the biggest fan of Smash JT. And with that being said, I guess I have a slight apology I need to make. <laughs> and, it's, and it's ever so slight. It's ever so slight. But... I painted the Atari VCS in the corner of this company is going to be taking your money. And I gathered that information from the interactions that I had with their marketing team and how they were really abrasive to me. And it smelt off. You know, I got that feeling like something's not right here. Because I was genuinely concerned about the product, genuinely had questions about it, and was very cordial when I reached out to them, and they were extremely rude in getting back to me. So for what it's worth, I took that as, okay, that brings up even more questions. So from the outside looking in, it, it's hard to know. And Atari eventually did <laughs> release this console. <laughs> this console that... I called a scam. That I said it was an epic fail. Uh, I compared it to the television of Eco Hype. Like these titles are hysterical <laughs> looking back and just knowing what we know now, how how off I was. And it's it's just interesting in hindsight to, to go look at this stuff. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is the article that Michael Arts posted on his LinkedIn profile page. It, it goes through explaining the success of the Atari VCS. Huge! And Television Amigo quotes on that one. The success of the Atari VCS and how he proved the haters, doubters, and, and trolls, if you will, wrong. And how proud he is of the team there. And I'm just going to go through this real quick just to catch you up with where he's at mentally. Because I feel like this is a fascinating expose of, of what went on behind those eyes of Michael Arts over the past three to four years with the Atari VCS. Dear friends, colleagues, and an amazing community, after five years of nonstop hustle at Atari, it is time for a change. Thursday, March 31st, was my last day at the company. What an amazing opportunity it's been to work for the pioneering game brand that first got me excited about interactive entertainment as a kid, and in 2017 gave me an unparalleled opportunity to reimagine its iconic hardware and create the all-new Atari VCS. In a career where I've pulled off the impossible several times, this is at the top so far. I mean, this is a victory lap letter. Let's not kid ourselves. But, I mean... In a weird way, I mean, really weird way, kudos, you know, he deserves a victory lap. Trolls called it a hoax, a scam, vaporware, underpowered Android garbage. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's, I never called it underpowered Android garbage, I called it an underpowered PC if it ever does see the light of day, and it is, it's an overpriced, underpowered PC that saw the light of day. And this, this whole paragraph is just it's weird he's he's trying so hard to to shove it in the faces of people like me that just were trying to warn the community that this smells off 
I don't think they're going to keep the promises of their initial Indiegogo campaign. It just, it sounds so great. And they got $3 million plus dollars from that. And the history of this guy is checkered at best. It was concerning. And I think it was fair to approach it with that mindset. And, and this goes back to the question I asked at the beginning of the video is, was it a scam? Like, that's why I say I, I need to give them an apology of, I'm sorry that I hammered your company so hard when you were trying to come out with this console. But that being said, it's not really much of a console. And as many people have alluded to in the past, Getting a console out isn't the finish line. It's the starting point for the consumer. And this project genuinely feels like their whole purpose was to just get a console out. And and just to be able to claim victory that they did that. And kind of just like drop the ball there. <laughs> like that's it. It's a underpowered PC with a sandbox mode that has access to Google Chrome on it. Cool, but also completely unnecessary and really not holding true to a lot of the promises that were made on that Indiegogo page. So is it a scam or not? It, that's the thing. It's like, well, if people just expect this to have come out, and that qualifies as it's not a scam because it exists, then no, it's not a scam if that's if that's your bar for scams. But if you're somebody that holds them to what they say it's going to have and include and be a part of it, and then it comes out and it's literally just a shell of that, and it, it didn't really hold true to the vast majority of the promises that they made to sell people on this idea in the first place, I could see why people would still consider this thing a scam like not nearly as bad of a scam as like a fraudulent company like coleco chameleon where they put a fake super nintendo chip inside of a console to make it seem like this thing was real like that was a genuine 100 percent through and through scam so i guess you could say there are different levels of scam and yes i was a little bit hard on it at first i was and i think that was justified that's that's all i'm saying in december 2020 in the thick of the pandemic fueled parts shortage the atari vcs started landing on backers doorsteps very true very true and that was right around the time that when you compare this to the intellivision amico that tommy tallarico was starting to complain about the parts shortage complain about the the price of the chips complain about the pandemic and through that the atari vcs was able to create the console and get it out the door. It's actually really impressive. The hardware was beautiful and well built, and the early adopters were finally admiring the real wood we'd promised. One of, one of the few promises they held to, but yeah, the real wood they promised. We delivered the basics at the beginning. Yeah, you did. <laughs> With the Atari VCS vaults, Ant Stream Arcade, and a few great indie games to play. And the backers were thrilled for the most part. That's definitely very debatable. Um, there, there are reports that the joystick on its own doesn't even connect properly with Bluetooth. Still to this day. They gave us their sincere thanks and their precious feedback. YouTubers started loading them up with Windows and Steam and emulators and doing what YouTubers do. The bottom line is that despite enormous headwinds, Atari delivered what it promised, and it was legit. This part, I feel like he begins to redirect the conversation. Like he was initially talking like how they're, they're stomping on the graves of the trolls and, and doing their victory march. Now it feels like he's starting to take shots at Intellivision. The bottom line is that despite enormous headwinds, Atari delivered what it promised, and it was legit. Meanwhile... And Television Amico is in their quiet period. The company that I had faith in because I got close to Tommy and let myself fall into the trap of just believing the insane things he would say. 
like? You know, um, you know, but we have, and I can tell this, we have over ten million dollars just in marketing in the United States. So we are going to be on TV. We are going to use okay. influencer. We are going to use famous Hollywood uh, folks who I can't mention their name right now, and I wish I could, but I know the PR and marketing people would kill me. This was from uh, the Review Tech USA interview with Tommy Tallarico, and in hindsight, it's it's actually kind of funny that that I would even fall for anything that this guy said. Ten million dollars in marketing alone. Why? Why wouldn't I question that? That's insanity. Where's that money coming from? Why would you just spout that off? Like, what the hell? So the most famous people in the world are going to be talking about this console. Wow. So this is Tommy Tallarico, and that is who I'm comparing Michael Arts against. First off, the guy behind the Atari VCS is none other than Michael Arst. And Michael Arst is not a developer, he's not a creative director, he's not somebody who's ever worked on video games directly themselves either. Do you know who Michael Arst is? He's a marketing guy! I'm Michael Arst, Chief Operations Officer of Atari Connect. Let's start by talking about the resurgence of the Atari brand. That's what the whole Atari Connected Life initiative is all about. And of course I'm talking about the Atari speaker hats. It's Bluetooth and it works really, really well. And for people who try it on, they get blown away immediately. You can take and make phone calls. Really high quality hat with really high quality audio built into it. All he does is market stuff to people, trying to make as many people fall for something as possible. And Who does that sound like? Does that sound maybe a little bit like this guy? As our spokespeople, okay. as our, you know, so, so again, make no mistake, whatever Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo have done in the past, have they advertised on TV? Yes. Did Ouya? I don't think so. Maybe they did. Um, you know, so, you know, we... Again, we have the two women who launched all those consoles. I so basically, what it ended up being, in hindsight, was Michael Arts was a marketing guy that followed through on the passion of getting a console out. Whereas we have Mr. Tommy Tallarico, a, a music guy turned marketer that hasn't. And this letter from Michael Arts I can't help but think it's kind of pointing its finger right at Tommy Tallarico and in television. Since then, there have been many more great games and apps added to the Atari VCS, several OS updates that improve the user experience, including the ability to play literally any cloud gaming service, Xbox games on Atari, and slowly but steadily improving reviews from both press and the community. While the VCS following may still be modest, that's a nice way to put it, it is deeply engaged and continues to inform and impress the team's work every day. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, it exists. You know, it came out and they, they it was bare bones, but they did what they said they were going to do. Produce a console that looks like what they were going to do and sell it. Yes, it's overpriced, but it exists. Now I'll move on to different ventures, and I can't thank my team partners and colleagues enough for their unwavering support and friendship over the past five years. Happily leave the Atari VCS in a good place and ready for what's next. I have my deep gratitude for everyone I had the pleasure of working with. Learn from and guide along the way since 2017. There's too many of you to mention, blah, 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 blah. First up for me is a bit of time off to enjoy with my wife and kids maybe, and looking at recharging. After that, hope to get neck deep again into something new and exciting. Well, Michael, if in television is, is still floundering around, wouldn't it be ironic? <laughs> so that that was Michael Arts taking his victory lap. Well deserved. Well deserved. I, I'll give you the clap, Michael. I mean, congratulations. You you proved me. I, I wouldn't say you proved me wrong per se, because I never said the Atari VCS was never going to come out. I always said it could be a scam. 
because it's going to be an underpowered, overpriced lie of what they said it was going to be able to do compared to what it is able to do. Which is true. But still, I think when you have a company like Intellivision to compare it against, it makes Atari look that much better because it proves how challenging the landscape is, how challenging bringing a console to market is this day and age. And Atari was able to do that. And in television, time will tell. But right now, who knows? Who knows? End of the day, is the Atari VCS a scam? It all depends on how you define the word scam. And for me, as a consumer, knowing what I know about this console, I have no intention to go out and purchase it at full retail price. And... I guess that doesn't make it a scam in my book now because I know what it is and I'm not supporting it. Whereas looking at something like the Intellivision Amico, all these promises, I, I paid for it at the beginning and nothing. And I think my mindset would be a little bit different with Atari if I had put a bunch of money into it in the Indiegogo campaign and then was disappointed with the final outcome. So I think a lot of the mentality has to do with when you put your money into it and what the outcome truly was, if that makes sense. Anyways, I'm going to leave the video right there. Interested to hear your thoughts on this entire situation regarding the Atari VCS and if it's a scam or not. It's highly debatable. Uh, and like I said, I think it depends on when you mentally bought in or not to the console. And what your thoughts on the Intellivision Amico are. I, I figure it's good to put that in there too as, as a barometer to compare these consoles against because it's ironic they both kind of came out around the same time with the idea i think the atari vcs was a few months maybe like six to eight months earlier but they were being developed at the same time frame and one exists and one is in a quiet period four years later thank you guys so much for watching and as always you stay smashing, 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 smashing.